Okay, uh, what I did here is I've got a meter hooked up to the sensor output. There's the sensor, white wire, and the ground, which is what the sensor reads relative to. In this case, um, it's reading relative to just a battery ground, but I'm not sure, honestly, uh, whether this is a 5 volt um, supply out of the ECM, which it probably is, and because it says 5 volt on the outside, as we saw here, it says 5 5 volts. So, well, you can read it there, 5 volts. Okay. At any rate, um, that that adds another particular problem. And the other particular problem is is that if we have a 5 volt reference here, then um, that 5 volts is a very low pressure, which means any corrosion in the circuit at all is a problem. Okay. So, corrosion in the circuit is a huge problem. And because this device is somewhat mysterious, the tendency is going to be for guys to want to, um, you know, they're going to be, just be blunt, guys are going to want to change the part. Okay, well, in changing the part, you may or may not fix it because the part may or may not be failed, but there's a way to know. All right, so let me show you how this works first, and then um, uh, I'll get into the diagnostic part of it. So it's very simple. So notice that without any any magnetic interference at all, we're getting about half battery voltage. Batteries pretty well charged up about 13. And if I just take a couple of my welding magnets and just move them, you can see that I'm getting the uh, the change in voltage. Okay. Now let me. What well, um, one of the things I want you to notice here is the meter. The meter jumps, and I want you to make sure you understand that that doesn't mean right there. See how the meter, right there, how the meter's jumping? That does not mean that the sensor is defective. It means that the meter is changing ranges. So if it goes to the highest possible range, and then I hit the range button, then suddenly the glitch is gone. So don't let yourself get faked out by a meter that's showing you a normal reading, but you're misreading it because you don't happen to notice that the meter is changing ranges. So this is just an explanation of how it works. It, it's very simple. If we were to put the cover back on, um, and it doesn't really matter, I guess, uh, but it doesn't matter. So I'll just put them in here like this. Um, but you notice that as I adjust the position, I get a um, I get a changing voltage. Well, it's that voltage right here going into the signal, okay, which is going into your signal. That signal voltage is what tells the computer, tells the software, the position of the device that's being measured, okay. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, the slots right here, as you see, allow the for the calibration, right? So we can calibrate it. Um, so what I'm going to do is turn this down to roughly five volts, or I, actually I could probably do exactly five volts or close. So that's this this sensor is now seeing five volts and operating on five volts. Um, so what I'll do is I will move the voltmeter lead away from the main voltage setting, and I'll put it back to the onto the uh, signal. All right, and notice we're getting two and a half volts. All right, so I'm on two and a half volts. And I'm going to show you how this works and just repeat it because we know how it works. Um, there's all the way one way. And there's all the way the other way. So the center, if I put this in the center right here, then I, what I want is I want the lowest possible number. Or I want two and a half, actually, don't I? Yeah, two and a half. So there's two and a half, and I can uh, 
put this back in, if I still have my screwdriver, still have my, yeah, here it is. Okay, so that, as far as I know, is calibrated. I can't be certain, but I think it is. All right, so that's centered pretty close right there. And if I go all the way this way, I get, eventually I'll get a low number of about 0.8. And then if I go all the way over here, I get a high number of 4.2. So there's an 8 tenths of a volt difference. So if you look at it, I've got 0.8 here. And I got 4.2 here. So apparently the normal range of operations is 0.8 to 4.2, which makes sense because you got an 8 tenths of a volt swing here and an 8 tenths of a volt swing here. So that's uh, something for you to understand when it comes to calibrating this thing. Um, so that's the first thing. The, qu the second question is going to be what happens if we put corrosion in the wire again? Um, and since I blew this one up, apparently, uh, I'll have to get another one, and I'll have to find another one to use, and that way I'll be able to, um, uh, oh look, I, I just found one. Okay, so let me, well, let me solder that in, and be, I'll be right okay, back. Okay, I've got another uh, 5K ohm tensiometer here as a rheostat. Right now, there's no resistance in there at all. This is still providing me with a 5 volt um, reference, but watch what happens, most importantly, to the signal. Okay, if I roll it up here and I put it back in the center. Oh, okay, I'll stay there. But watch what happens as I start rolling in the uh, the resistance. Just the tiniest little adjustment, and I'm starting to get a difference. So let me let me go down to a half a volt, which is a. No, I'm going to do a quarter volt. So I'm going to go to two. Oops. All right, now there's an aberrant position, and that's a quarter of a volt, which is about 5% of what the 5% um, of what the total sweep is. So uh, let me let me reshuffle, and we'll figure out what we got. Okay, what I've done is I've isolated the circuit. Um, that's important, right? And because if you remember from previous examples if I didn't edit them out um, I screwed up and I didn't have everything completely isolated so I was trying to read through the sensor I was trying to, and it didn't work and when I finally did it it was like 16 ohms or something okay so here I'm getting a fairly consistent 158.7 which is 160 for example um, now that created a quarter of a volt um, drop in the uh, signal all right, and obviously because it was in the ground, it's going to create a problem in the signal and the sensor. So, I got to go pick up my daughter at school. Okay, so, and just in perfect time because I'm finished. So, um, this 150 ohms, which is admittedly a lot, okay, um, but... The point is, this is going to be a gradual thing, all right? Guys aren't going to notice it much, and what's going to what's going to happen is is that you're you're still at 2.25, which is what it was a minute ago. That's still a normal reading, all right? So what's going to happen here is this thing's either going to fail altogether, which is very unlikely, um, or something in the circuitry is going to fail, which is incredibly likely. 80%, okay?